Hackney has a lot of great places, but behind this wall is one of its little gems. This is Haggerston Park. Let's have a look. This park is rich in plants and trees and flowers, but it's got a rich history as well. Like I'm standing in a filled-in canal basin in the middle of Haggerston Park. What's all that about? And how did the park first start? We're trying to explore that in this short film. In the 1700s, this entire area was just green fields. There are very few buildings through here. At the top of the road was the Nags Head, which was a popular traveller's rest. And Goldsmith Row, which runs down the side of the park, was called Mutton Lane. And the only thing down there were some almshouses. So there's very, very few buildings, lots of fields, lots of animals being grazed. Gradually, that turned into horticulture, and um, a, lot of, a lot of vegetables were raised in here for the city. And then after that, William Rhodes, in about 1750, came along and recognised that the soil could be quite good for brick making and tile making. And like many of the industries around here, started making tiles. He had two large ponds here and here, and he started making tiles throughout this road eventually was called Tudory Street, which is a reminder of the tile making business. Other roads were set up, Bush Street, Maystone Street, Essex Place, and all those roads had lots and lots and lots of houses built upon them. So eventually there was no green space here at all. By the 1800s, the whole site was becoming industrialised. The Imperial Gaslight and Coke Company took over this site and started making gas from coke that was brought in to the Regent's Dock and brought down the Regent's Canal through into Haggerston Basin. The entire site was fairly much untouched during the start of the Second World War. That was until 1945. Well, the park had a very rich history, but there's one date that really stands out when everything changed around here. Let's go back there. It was an ordinary spring morning, 15th of March, 1945, when everything changed. The gasworks behind me took a direct hit from a V2 bomb, and the whole site was obliterated. We were lucky enough to meet Bill and Beryl, two people who lived in this area about the time that we're talking about. I left, the, the, left 241 Hackney Road where I was living at the time when I heard a terrific bang and I turned instantly in front of, to the sound coming from and I saw a huge flame which I thought was engulfing the whole of the, the area. But as I did found a few minutes later, it, the gas works had been had a direct hit by a V2 bomb. I remember as a child, the gas works catching light and everyone rushing into my bedroom and lifting me up and seeing it. I don't know whether it's the actual gas gasometer itself or what, but something was ablaze. It was a massive fire. After the gas works was hit, the entire site was levelled and the remaining buildings were taken down. The whole area here was just waste ground. Then in 1956, the site was handed back to Hackney Council and the local councillors decided to make it into a recreational ground for local people. It was only this half of the site that was used initially, the rest was all still contaminated. They employed Mr R. Lyle Thorpe, and he was the designer of this side of the park. And if you look closely, you can see he was a nautical man, and it's all designed with a very nautical theme. Let's have a look. So using the original features of the park, the large wall behind me, this raised area was created. This is the ship's bridge, then looking straight ahead is the deck. Then to the left of that, we've got these ovals cut into the sides of the bank. If you look closely, you see they resemble lifeboats that would hang off the liner. And right down the far end is a large compass, which is part of the sundial. And to the right of that is the ship's mast. And the original photos shows a great big ship's mast in there. So you can see all these nautical themes have come together to create this HMS Haggerston Park. <laughs> In the 1960s, all the houses that covered all this area were eventually cleared. It's part of the slum clearance. There was quite a lot of damage to the houses and they're quite poorly built anyway. So they were all wiped off the map and this whole area was completely levelled. Eventually, 
After about 15, 20 years, it was turned over to be a park. And we had established a little one o'clock club, which is a little prefab building at the end here for mothers and children. The small city farm, as it started in 1984, a community resource founded by local people with a few animals. And they even developed part of a wild area, a wildlife area, and a woodland walk. And then gradually that's all been developed as we've gone on. And even over the last 30 years, there's been even more developments. The little one o'clock club, the prefab building, is now a full, fully purposed children's centre. The city farm, which started in 1984 and is now a successful and community resource, accessed by over 100,000 people per year. We were very honoured recently to have a visit from His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. They came to see the city farm and to meet some of the hard-working volunteers from around the local area. But what we want to do is we want to recognise the history of the park and the things that have gone before us. And that's why we want to put an old barge in here, full with black grass, to represent the coal that would have come in from the Regent's Canal. From this basin, the coal would have gone across to the big gas works and we want to plant some poplar trees in a large circle to represent where the gasometer was. And then we want to have other interpretive pieces of information around the park so people remember and can see where we've come from and where we're going to.